Bits and pots always politics, isn't it? Well, not today because we've decided to have a day out. We've come to the Bethel City Church in Abbey Alton to see what they are doing so differently because as we all know across Stoke-on-Trent, across the whole of the country, Christian churches, congregations are diminishing inside. Not here though, they're doing something very, very differently. Let's go inside and see what it is that's making them so popular. I'm here with James, Sarah and Paul of Bethel City Church in Stoke-on-Trent. Uh, guys, could you first of all tell me what Bethel City Church is and how it came about, please? Um, Bethel City Church is um, a, a new church, we're only two years old. Um, when I say new, we um, inherited a church from the past, but we decided to close it down and, um, because we felt it wasn't going anywhere or being a progressive in its nature. And um, we started two years ago and um, it's a Pentecostal church um, that serves the whole of the city of Stoke and Trent. Okay, thanks. So you just said that Bethel City Church is a Pentecostal church. Yeah. Now, could you explain to me what Pentecostal churches believe and how are they different from, say, Church of England or Roman Catholic churches? There's kind of three spheres of church. So you've got the, the charismatic sphere, you've got the evangelical sphere, um, and Pentecostal is in the middle. So we're kind of mainline, as it were. That's how it kind of operates. So now comes the question that uh, has been puzzling me. I've looked at your website, and I've been now to one of your services, and the question is that given that churches across the country mm. have got falling congregations, how is Bethel City booking that trend? Uh, totally. We've grown from, from 60 to 500 in two years, so I think we're booking it big time. But what's the secret behind that? What do you think is drawing people to your church where they're falling away from others. We've seen churches closed down, turned into houses, pubs, and yet your church is vibrant and thriving. Why? Well, I'll tell you from my point of view, and then maybe you can ask Sarah, because Sarah comes to the church and um, give a better answer, actually, maybe. Um, I think it's growing at such a phenomenal rate because what we've done is we've stripped back all the stuff that religion has made church um, alien to our society and we've stripped it all back and just got back to the raw essence of what church is about. And church is about loving and inspiring people for works of service. It's about affecting the community in which they live. It's about glorifying God. And that's it. And, and we've stripped everything back and we focus on them three areas. And, um, and people are responding to that. Yeah, well, here it's a place where you can come and belong. Um, we have people from all different backgrounds. And uh, everybody here is received and loved for who they are and inspired to be all they can be. Um, you get people that have come and um, travelled a long way to come here because there isn't a lot of churches like this in the area and people want to be here because we have such a good time and um, there is such a great atmosphere my children are here in this church and they love it they can't wait for Sunday they can't wait to get to church and I am so proud to be bringing my children up in this church <laughs> Sarah, can I just ask you a question then? Yeah. Were you part of a traditional congregation before you came to Bethel City? I was part of, of this church as it was before and then left because I um, felt very frustrated. It wasn't really going anywhere. And so we were travelling up to places like Manchester, to Bradford, to really um, to be a part of something good, something that it was worth getting up in the morning and going for. Um, but when, when James and, and Pastor Becky, when they came here, um, it just turned it all around, and to have something that's in circle trend like this is amazing. Um, it's everything we've ever prayed for and more. I've read on your blog, James, mm -hmm. that uh, you love Britain and you think it's the greatest place mm -hmm. in the world to live. So with that, it's a bit of a complicated question. Do you think that a country's religion and its national identity are tied together? Because I noticed that your church is, if you forgive me, I think, 
quite an American style church. Okay. So do you think that Christianity is essential to the British identity? Um, I think, um, I, I would say we're more Australian than American. Um, that if you look at the general church in, in, the, in the world, we're, we're sort of that way inclined and um, quite, quite free and sort of no worries type attitude. Um, and I think um, in the UK, I think religion is, is massive. I think it's part of who we are. I think it's the foundational questions of who we are. Um, in any nation, their, their religion and their, their belief, their faith system is, is the basis of who, they are, who we are because, because faith um, creates um, some answers to some questions like um, where we've come from, why are we here, and where, where are we going, and, and what's the reason for all of it. And, and faith adds the answer to that. And I think in our nation, I think faith is a, is a massive, massive subject that, that maybe things like um, media or, or things like um, certain institutions, educational institutions, even the church itself, have marginalised the understanding of what it is to have faith. Um, and, and they've created um, a form of rules and regulations which is not free, which is not Bible. And if we can get back to what Bible's about, it's about relationship rather than the religion. And it helps with what I talked about today, about faith, hope and love, bringing and injecting that into our society. Much has been made recently of the growth in Britain of Islam. Yeah. Do you think that Christianity can re-engage a secular Britain and counter the decline in faith? Yeah, absolutely. I absolutely think we can engage in Britain, I think. Um, part of who we are is we, we've lost touch with who we are and when we find our identity again of what church is actually about well, of course because Christianity is all about God and it's all about people so if you're going to live real Christianity you've got to engage with God and you've got to engage with people so when we find out who we are then of course we'll engage with our nation. Why do you think that Bethel City Church can succeed where the traditional church has failed? Because we're relevant and um, we're going to keep being relevant, we're going to keep moving forward and keep changing and show people that Jesus is alive and that's what life is all about. I was going to say that we, we can't guarantee that but we must always be aware of that in order that we can carry on changing mm -hmm. and carry on being that's relevant. Right. If we ever think we've made it then I think we've missed it. It's about keeping our eyes on, on Jesus and what the Word says and, and, and constantly changing and being relevant to people and being real with people and not trying to be something that we're not. So um, we can't guarantee it but hopefully we'll carry on. Yeah. Your relaxed style, could it be possibly conceived by more traditionalists as being in conflict with church values, with Christian values? Yeah, it could be perceived by, by other traditional Christians, but, but we can't control that perception. All we can do is be ourselves. And, and the Bible is very clear on what church is, and there's not many things in the Bible about what church is. It's very, it's very simple. It's, it's about relationships, and it's about loving and inspiring people. It's about doing life with people and it's about glorifying God. And again, one of the reasons that I personally think that church has lost its edge is because we've, we've almost sanctified traditions. But the traditions aren't in the Bible. They're, they're man-made traditions. And if we get back to what church is, it's about relationship. It's about people. It's about engaging God and people. And, and how informal is that? We ask the city to come to the church. But it's the church that should be going to the city. <laughs> You created a church leadership team, yeah, um, and you've created six campuses across the city. Is that right? Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about what's involved with a leadership team and how the campuses operate? How it all operates and works. Yeah, leadership is massively important. And again, one of the things I think church has um, lost its way on is, is it's lost its understanding of what leadership is, and and everything rises and falls on leadership. And you've got to have strong leadership in place to actually lead a, a community of people forward. And um, our leadership team is a phenomenal team. They're, they're, they're so committed and loyal to one another and they mm -hmm. such a servant heart. And um, they're just, honestly, their spirit as people is beautiful. They're not, they're not people that are desiring to be on the stage or anything like that. They're just, they're just so great people to, to have in my life personally, just on a relational level. They're phenomenal people. And they're very godly people as well. You know, they, they, they're very clean people and are just wonderful people to, to have in my life personally. And how that works is they, they bring simply this, they bring vision and governance to an infrastructure as an organisation. So we've got a great organisational structure and the basis of how we operate is to empower people and delegate people because what we are as a church is we love people for who they are and inspire them to become all that they can be. So we've got to build an infrastructure that will inspire people to do greater things than we could do as a leadership. So actually we, we're kind of, we might be the face, but we're the hidden foundational dimension that everything's built up and above. And You're the facilitators. Yeah. 
Okay. So, <clears throat> having been here today and seen one of your services, you've got a fantastic setup, loads of space, <laughs> lots of technology. How do you share that setup with the whole wider community? The community of 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 the area. Do you share with the local community of Abbey Halton, or yeah. how, or is the uh, facility open to people from across the region? Yeah, we do. Um, we, we use this centre as a conference centre for different um, organisations, communities, agencies. We um, have a, a, a massive amount of um, community engagement programmes with kids and youth and students and old people, and all our campuses work to serve the community in which they're in. So, for instance, we've just set up a half a million pound um, community campus in Mia, and that's simply there to, to be a hub of activity in the community. And out of that, there's all sorts of things that are based from there. And that's what we use our facilities for. Again, they're not church steeples, they're buildings that can be used for people. So we have to build them and design them as people friendly. We have to build them and design them in a way that people can access, i.e. via internet or those kind of things. And, and, and again, saying internet, internet kind of is an unofficial campus. We have 2,000 visits a week onto our website and people come there and relate there and Twitter and all that kind of stuff. So everything we use is, is for that purpose. <laughs> So, given that you've got this place, yeah. which is quite a large building, yeah. full of technology, mm -hmm. full of people and helpers, workers, and you've got six mm -hmm. campuses, yeah. that's the term you yeah, use, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. It must cost a small fortune. Yeah. How do you fund it? We, um, we do what the Bible says, and the Bible says we've got to give. And so, so part of our culture, part of who we are as an organisation is we're, we're generous. And, and we do give, and, and, and we believe in giving. We believe in that dimension of generosity. We also believe in being very shrewd in activity, so we, we, we pursue grants. And we don't, we're not very successful at that, actually. We don't really get a lot of grants, mm -hmm. because people think that all we're trying to do is get people into church, mm -hmm. so they don't give us the grants. Where we're doing great stuff, mm -hmm. Um, and we're not trying to get people into church, we're trying to serve people. Um, but there, there's a kind of discrimination in that aspect, in my personal opinion, um, that we have to address and constantly fight. And then we also do things like fundraising. So um, um, we'll, we'll sell donuts or we'll, we'll try and, you know, car washes or car boot sales or we'll do that kind of stuff that will raise money. We've done an album, so our, our music team have done an album, so we sell that, which obviously brings money in and that kind of thing. So we, we try and be very entrepreneurial at the same time because it does cost a lot of money to do. Okay, <clears throat> do you all fund it from your congregation, yeah. or is there, have you got an umbrella organisation who assist you or do who direct you? No, we're part of a denomination, um, but no, our congregation. So we don't get money from the denomination. So sorry, as a parishioner here, would you? What would you say to someone who was unsure about religion, unsure about coming along to Bethel City Church? Um, what sort of reception could they expect if they turned up here on a Sunday? You can be made to feel very, very welcome and give us a try. Please come, please come and check us out. I think it'll blow you away. I'm sure you'll Whatever you think about church, uh, we put those thoughts aside and um, come open minded, open hearted. And uh, Jesus, the Bible says that Jesus made a way that we could get to him and know him. And um, it, there is a way that you can know Jesus. And I encourage you to come to church to know Jesus and uh, get connected to people. It's, uh, it's a phenomenal house. And it's a place where people can get to know each other and feel at home and uh, be loved and inspired. So it's a great place and uh, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Church, raise your hand. I